So one of the reasons that mathematicians get so excited about integration is its role in finding areas. And I'm going to show you uh, how that works, how we can use integration to find areas. First, by doing an example that we can already do without integration to sort of hopefully convince you that this is working. Then we'll apply it to one that we wouldn't be able to do easily otherwise. And then I'll show you how and why it works in general. So here I've got the line y equals x plus 1 with the vertical lines x equals 1 and x equals 3 here and they form a trapezium. Uh, so we know already hopefully how to find the uh, area of a trapezium or if we don't I'll remind you. So we have the two side lengths here a and b we call this one h usually and the formula for the area is 1 half times a plus b times h. So it's like the average of these two sides times by h. Now uh, so let's work those distances out here. So y equals x plus 1. So the y coordinate is just one more than the x coordinate at any point. So here y will be 2 and here y will be 4. So this length is 2 and this one is 4. And the equivalent of h here is 2. It just goes from 1 to 3. So we've got the area here is equal to uh, 1 half times 2 plus 4 times 2, which gives us half times 2 is 1. And 2 plus 4 is 6 units squared. Okay. Now, the way we could do this with integration um, is uh, to integrate this uh, line x plus 1. So I'm going to do the integral of x plus 1 with respect to x. I'm just going to do it slightly differently here. So I'm going to have here also these limits 1 and 3 uh, we need. I'm going to put those on the integral like this. And what this means is integrate it and then substitute these values in and subtract one from the other. So let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to integrate uh, or you know anti-differentiate this these terms here. So I get x squared over two plus x. And now the notation uh, we we move those numbers one and three to the right here. This notation, and what we're going to do is substitute in three and get three squared over two plus three. And then I'm going to subtract what I get when I substitute in one. So I've got one squared over two plus 1. And this then gives me 9 over 2 plus 3. And then I've got minus 1 and a half, so minus 3 over 2. So 9 over 2 minus 3 over 2, that's 6 over 2. And 6 over 2 is 3. So that's 3 plus 3, which is 6 units squared, exactly as before. So there we go, magic. Um, integration here applied with this to this method has given us the same answer as the one that we already knew to be correct. So I'm going to do another example then of how we'd find an area that we couldn't otherwise do it and then I'll sort of justify this in the third part of the video um, uh, at the end. But hopefully you might at least start to believe me a little bit that this could be true. So the remarkable thing about this is that it works for uh, all different functions. So here I've got work was 2x cubed plus 3x plus 7. And if we follow the same procedure, here I want the area underneath the curve, you know, between the curve and the x-axis here, as we had before, uh, between 2 and 5. Uh, this will give me the area. So if I do the integral between 2 and 5 of 2x cubed plus 3x plus 7 with respect to x, that's Okay, increase the power by 1, x to the 4 divided by the new power. So I end up with x to the 4 divided by 2, because I've got the 2 in front as well. So that cancels out with 2 from the 4. Um, plus 3x squared over 2, plus 7x. If you're not sure where these have come from, go back to the antiderivatives and integration video. And I want that between 2 and 5. So remember, what that means is substitute in 5 and then... Uh, subtract what you get when you substitute in 2. So this gives me 5 to the 4 divided by 2 plus 3 times 5 squared over 2 plus 7 times 5. So I've just replaced x with 5 in this expression. And now I'm going to subtract the same thing when I put 2 in. So I get 2 to the 4 divided by 2 plus 3 times 2 squared over 2 plus 7 times 2. So here's what I have when I put 2 into the function. And uh, if you sort all these numbers out, either work them out or plug it into your calculator, it will give you an answer here of 
357 uh, units squared and that would be the area uh, enclosed in here. So it's quite remarkable that um, the integration can uh, tell us that. So the first one obviously I tried to convince you that it was true with an example and now I'm just telling you that it's true. So I think it's about time that I will uh, should justify this and prove to you that this uh, this really should work. So should warn you this, but it's a little bit more technical, and for most A-level courses, you wouldn't be required to come up with this sort of argument. But it is really uh, informative. You will need to know about first principles differentiation, though, to carry on uh, from from this part for it to make sense. So there is a video on that um, uh, earlier on. Uh, so if this is going to make sense, you need to at least thought about that. Um, so here uh, we've got a sort of just drawn a sort of general uh, curve here, and I'm going to go uh, up to a point x here, and I'm going to define a function which is uh, called so I'm going to call an area function. Okay, so so this area in here I'm going to say is a of x. It's the area up to x, right? Uh, and then I'm going to go just a little bit further than x. So I'm going to go uh, you know, I'm going to go h further, where h is a reasonably small number, and we're going to go to uh, x plus h. So if I did the area, you know, all the way up to also including all of this stuff, so if I now add this in as well, then the then the total area would be, you know, area function up to x plus h. That's what this area means. This means take all the area under the curve from zero up to the point we've got to. Uh, here it was x, and then we've now gone up to uh, x plus h. And the uh, crux of this proof is to look at this little uh, this little extra area in here. We're going to look at it in uh, two different ways. Now, firstly, this area in here, okay, this red bit. Well, it's the extra amount we get when we go up to x plus h instead of uh, going up to x. So one way of writing this down is just to say that it's the area uh, up to x plus h minus the area up to x. It's the difference between those two things. And now I'm going to just compare this to uh, two uh, rectangles. So if I just draw that section out again here, so that's just a copy of the, the red section uh, up there, it's got width h, and if I just cut it off at this point here, the y value here is just the value of the function here. So if this function, uh, let's call it f of x, let's say it was y as f of x, then this y value would be f of x. So the area of just this rectangle here, you know, ignoring this part here, okay, would be uh, h times f of x. And so the area that I've got here is larger than uh, is larger than h times f of x. Okay. So, so this area is uh, bigger than, in fact, let's say uh, greater than or equal to uh, f of x times h. Now, another way of looking at it is to say, okay, don't cut it off there, but actually, why don't we cut it off here instead at the top and say, what about what about this? Rectangle. Okay, so I'm going up to this point now. So this one is uh, goes up to goes up to f of x plus h. Right. So this height of this larger rectangle is f of x plus h. So this is smaller than the area of this rectangle. You see, because the you know I've got now I've got a rectangle that's bigger than the bit that I'm looking at, and the area of the rectangle is h times f of x plus h. Okay. So if you're following it this far, that's the that's the hardest bit. You know, we've, we've enclosed this area in between these two rectangles. Right now, we're almost there. So what I'm going to do is take this inequality and divide it through everywhere by h. Now h is a positive number, so I'm allowed to do that without messing up the inequality. It's not going to change the signs. So I'm going to divide by h, and here I'm going to divide by h as well. And then here I'm going to divide by h, and we've got this. So 
Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, the limit as h tends to 0 through this whole uh, expression and uh, you'll have to uh, trust me I suppose that that's something that we're allowed to do, there doesn't seem to be anything uh, obviously wrong with it uh, but I'm just going to say okay, you know, if, the, if this is true then you know it's true for any value of h so it's also true for very small values of h and so it's going to be uh, true in the limit and uh, that turns out to be okay here. If these had been strict inequalities I'd be a bit more worried but we've got less than or equal to here um, I'm, ha I'm happy to take the limit. I'm just trying to give you an idea of how this works. Now the limit of h tends to 0 of the, of the central part, so let's do that first, I'm just going to literally write that as as it is here and this one, now the limit of x h tends to 0 of f of x plus h, well if I make h very close to 0 then f of x plus h is just going to come down and be very close to f of x. This function is nice and smooth so uh, you know as I make h very small it's just going to become f of x. The limit as h tends to 0 of f of x, well there's no h in there so that is just f of x and we don't need to do any taking of the limits. And now the really nice thing here is you look at this form and as I said at the start you need to know first principles differentiation because this is exactly the form of the first principles derivative of the function a. Okay, it's a, you know, we had the form before we did it with f, it was f of x plus h minus f of x over h when we took the limit. We've got the same thing with a here. So this is the derivative of uh, a with respect to x at h. Okay, so um, either a prime of x or we could write it as uh, dA by dx if you like. And that is lying between f of x and f of x. Now, if something is both bigger than or equal to and smaller than or equal to a number, you know, if I'm greater than or equal to 3 and I'm smaller than or equal to 3, I must be equal to 3. So actually the fact that this is both smaller and bigger than this means we can say the only way that can work is, is, is if dA by dx is equal to uh, f of x. Right? And now integrating uh, you know, this expression then you know, finding the antiderivative, we're saying okay well if we're saying if we differentiate the area we get the we get this function so you know the reverse process of differentiation is integration so it must be that if I uh, integrate uh, f of x dx then I get this area function okay and that uh, justifies the link between differentiation and integration or integration and areas now just to go back to the previous example we had you know, the integral between 2 and 5 then why do we do all that sort of you know substituting in and subtracting well if when I integrate the function at a particular you know uh, you know I, I get this area up to function what I actually want here is the area up to 5 minus the area up to 2 right you know so I want all the stuff up from 0 to 5 then I want to subtract this bit from 0 to 2 so that's where this thing comes in where we do you know if I want this area here and this is the function y equals uh, f of x that I would integrate that function with respect to x between 2 and 5 and what I get then well the integral is this area and the integral is this area function when I substitute in x so I do you know the area up to I get the area up to 5 you know minus the area up to 2 so I want to substitute in 5 and subtract what I get when I substitute in 2 so um, a little bit complicated but I hope it was worth it it's a you know really nice to you know proof here to see you know why this really works it's one of the first you know really I think elegant proofs uh, you know that you can you can look at you know you know, now you might say there's a few cases I haven't considered you know and we, we do need to think separately about when this function goes below the axis we'll look at that in another video that's an important special case um, and you could probably pick some tiny little holes in in in, in the um, you know this setup here but basically you know, this justifies that link